Father in heaven, we are glad to be in your presence once again. We honor you, the mighty God. We honor you, the sovereign one. We honor you, your majesty. We honor you, King Jesus. We honor you, Holy Spirit. We worship you, Jesus, the star of the morning. We honor you this morning in the beauty of your holiness out of the womb of the morning. We thank you this morning uh, for, Lord, uh, we can sing uh, of sins forgiven, that our sins are forgiven by reason of your death and your resurrection, uh, that we've been declared righteous as if we've never sinned. We can sing of our conscience being cleared uh, by reason of the blood of Jesus, uh, Father, in the Old Testament, uh, they had the sacrifices of the animals, but those sacrifices could never clear their conscience. They could give the sacrifice, but they would still feel guilty. Their conscience wasn't cleared. Uh, But here we are, Lord, in your presence uh, with a clear conscience uh, because the blood of Jesus has washed us inside and out. Uh, We are grateful this morning uh, that we can sing uh, of conscience cleared, uh, of sins forgiven, uh, of death defeated and life without end uh, that we have no fear this morning uh, for your power is greater than all uh, we honor you father we thank you and we bless you oh sweet holy spirit uh, our teacher our counselor our comforter the one who guides us into all truth uh, we are so grateful that you are with us this morning we love you sweet holy spirit uh, we honor you in our midst sweet holy spirit uh, lord thank you thank you holy spirit uh, that when we don't know what to pray for as we ought. You have been leading us for all these years. We are grateful, Spirit of God. Honor be to the Spirit of God. Honor be to our Heavenly Father, our loving Father. We thank you this morning. We understand that we are blessed. In every way, we are blessed. In every dimension, we are blessed because we have Jesus. What we have now is better than money. What we have now is better than children. What we have now is better than riches. What we have now is better than life itself. What we have is the mighty Jesus, the son of the living God who dwells inside of us. We are privileged and blessed. And so we rejoice this morning. We rejoice this morning. We rejoice for the privilege, for the blessing we have. Hallelujah to the king of glory. Jesus, you are greater than anything that anyone could ever acquire. You are greater than the riches of this world. You are greater than gold. Lord, as long as I have you, I have everything that I need. And so this morning I rejoice that I'm starting my day with all that I need to be a success. I'm starting my day with all that I need to have joy, to have peace, to have well-being, to have health. I am starting my day with all that I have is Jesus. And Jesus is all that I need. For Lord, you have said, you have given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And so this morning. uh, Father, thank you, Lord. Uh, Whatever your children need here on this prayer altar, they have received because they have Jesus. Uh, It is in Jesus uh, that we, our needs are met. Uh, It is in Jesus uh, that life itself emanates from, for it is in you, Lord, uh, that we live and move and have our being. Uh, Everything we have has come from you, for every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, uh, with whom there's no variableness or shadow of turning. You are everything we need, Lord. Uh, We exalt your name this morning. We magnify your name this morning. We praise your name this morning. We say, King Jesus, hallowed be your name. Heavenly Father, hallowed be your name. Holy Spirit, be honored in this place. Oh, we thank you. We bless you. We reverence you. Thank you, Lord. As we see another breaking of the day, we are grateful that we are alive and well to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Thank you, Father. Your mercies are new every morning. This morning, we receive mercy once again. Mercy that triumphs over judgment. Mercy, Lord, uh, for every failure, for every transgression, every sin, every way we've missed the marker, we receive mercy. The Bible says in Psalm 19 verses 12 to 14 in the New Living Translation, how can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me, Lord. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. 
sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, uh, by the power of your Holy Spirit, uh, locate every sin lurking in our hearts. Anything, Lord, uh, that is not of you, Lord, uh, locate it and uproot it, Lord, please, in the name of Jesus. Uh, may it be uprooted. Uh, may the sin matter, Lord, uh, be dealt with by the blood of Jesus. Uh, cleanse us from every head and fault. Anything that Satan would use against us, use as a landing ground to come and interfere with what you are doing in our lives. Father, we submit it under the blood of Jesus. We are asking this morning, keep us back from deliberate sins. Don't let sin control us. According to your word, Lord, we have been delivered from the power of sin. You say sin shall have no dominion over us for we are not under the law, but under grace. Romans six fourteen. Sin, we decree this morning and declare to the body of sin that would want to manifest in any of us uh, that you have no dominion over us for we are not under the law we are under the grace uh, of God uh, in the name of Jesus uh, Father this morning let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be pleasing to you oh Lord our Redeemer everything we meditate on everything we think about uh, everything we say uh, may it bring you praise uh, may it bring you glory in the name of Jesus uh, oh we thank you we thank you we thank you Bible says in Romans 6, 22 to 23, but now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let's thank him this morning for his free gift, the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord, that this morning you and I, child of God, have been set free from sin and we have come, we have become become slaves of God. We have become slaves of righteousness. We have a fruit of holiness. What comes out of our life is holiness because of the mercies of God. So this morning, we remind ourselves that man, woman, child, daughter, son, we have the fruit of holiness. Let the fruit of holiness begin to manifest in your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus. According to Romans 8 verses 1 and 2, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Yes, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. We declare it this morning on this prayer line. There is no condemnation on any one of us by the power of the blood of Jesus. Any evil judgments that have been passed against our lives in the realm of the spirit spirit, any evil judgments passed against us from the pit of hell, judgments of disease, judgments of failure, judgments of regression, judgments of stagnation, judgments of frustration, judgments of any form of attack in the name of Jesus. We overturn those judgments by the blood of Jesus for there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Any judgment that would want to stand against you this morning, we dissolve it by reason of the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus obliterate, blot out every handwriting, every every ordinance, every decree, every covenant, every trade agreement, anything written against you, anything that is against you, Lord, we declare blood of Jesus blots them out. They are canceled. They are deleted. They are obliterated, never to appear again for Jesus has nailed them to the cross. Whatever judgments would testify against your bloodlines, against your seed, against your children, we nail them to the cross this morning in the name of Jesus. They have been taken out of the way. Principalities and powers and rulers of darkness uh, have been defeated by Jesus. Uh, he has put them to a public shame. Uh, uh, they are nailed on the cross. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, yes, uh, we have no condemnation. Uh, there is no reason why Satan can tamper with any one of us this morning uh, because there is no condemnation to us in the name of Jesus. Uh, Romans 8 2. For the spirit of life for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Begin to declare a child of God this morning. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made, made means whether you like it or not, if you're in Christ, the spirit of life in Christ has made you free from the law of sin and death. Therefore, anything that represents sin and death cannot dominate your life. Anything that is evil is not from God. It's not from the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Therefore, it cannot dominate you. You have 
have been set free this morning. Declare your freedom. I am free in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. My family, my children, my spouse, my brothers, my sisters, my parents, grandparents, everybody connected to us. We declare your freedom this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We are free indeed for whom the sun sets free is free indeed. We refuse to subject ourselves to any yoke of bondage in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. We are free. God has set us free. Jesus has set us free. Nothing can actually oppress us in the name of Jesus. Nothing can subjugate us. Nothing can make us slaves because we are not slaves. We are no longer slaves to fear in the name of Jesus. We are sons and daughters of the most high God. God is doing what he wants to do in our lives. The great and mighty God is manifesting his power, his glory, his goodness all over our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, my God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be exalted. You are worthy to be magnified. We thank you for this wonderful freedom you've given us in the realm of the spirit. Thank you, Father. No power can steal our freedom. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. In the King James Version, verse 1, it says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Who has bewitched you? And then it says in the easy read version, Galatians 3 1, you people in Galatia, are so foolish. Why do I say this? Because I told you very clearly about the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. But now it seems as though you have left, you have let someone use their magical powers to make you forget. Bible is saying it is possible to be bewitched even as a child of God. It's saying here in the easy read version, you have allowed someone to use their magical powers to make you forget. We're going to pray and ask God, whatever it is that makes me forget what Jesus died to give me so that I begin to doubt, I begin to fear, I begin to look like I'm confused when I'm a child of God. Whatever is working on my mind, working on my soul and making me forget, it's like a spell. This morning, we are praying. We don't want to be like the Galatians. Let the spell be broken. Let the spell be broken. Paul said, who has used their magical powers over you to make you forget? Because when I live by the realities of the resurrected Jesus, everything is under my feet. What is it that is making me forget? Paul said, who has bewitched you? Who has used their magical powers? Let's begin to pray this morning. Father God, whatever would make me forget the resurrection power? What would make me forget what Jesus has died to give me? Lord, let the spell be broken. Let the spell be broken in the name of Jesus. We don't want to be like the Galatians in Galatians 3.1 that the Bible says they've been bewitched. Father God, any type of spell, any type of spell that the enemy is spinning around us, Lord, let the spell be broken. Let the spell be broken. Every wrong mindset, every wrong patterns of thinking, Lord, let those patterns be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Loko sokorabashanda. Whatever, Lord, uh, is making us forget uh, what you have done for us. Uh, whatever is making us, oh God, uh, to live a defeated life. Uh, Lord, let it be broken. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, let it be broken. Let it be broken. Every web of deceit. Every web of lies that Satan and his agents have been spinning around God's children, let it be broken. In the name of Jesus, Galatians 5, Galatians 5, we'll look at verse 7. The Bible says in Galatians 5, verse 7, you did run well. 
Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion does not come from him that calls you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. You ran well. Who hindered you? This persuasion does not come from God. Let me read it for you again in the easy read version. Because the first one is King James I read. This one says, you were doing so well. Who caused you to stop following the truth? It certainly wasn't the one who chose you. Be careful. Just a little yeast makes the whole batch of dough rise. What is the Bible saying here? A little iota of unbelief. It can poison your whole faith walk with God. A little iota, a little drop. If I add a little bit of arsenic poison into your water, it spoils the whole bottle of water. You can't drink that water anymore. It becomes poisonous. The Bible is saying you were running well. You were running well in your faith walk. Who hindered you? Who has elbowed you out of the race? Who is elbowing you out so that you stop walking by faith and living by faith? Why is it that all of a sudden you are no longer as, you know, um, on fire as you used to be? That's what the Bible is saying. It says a little living, living at the whole lamp. I want us to pray, not just for ourselves, but for the whole body of Christ. Any teaching, any wrong belief that dilutes the power of God and causes us to live beneath the standard of what God died for us to have. Let's begin to ask God, Holy Spirit, locate it and uproot it in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that is stopping us from running a good race and fighting a good fight, Lord, in the name of Jesus, locate it this morning and uproot it. Anything, oh God, that is diluting our faith walk is causing us not to be as zealous, not to be as on fire, is reducing the intensity of the fire, is reducing the intensity of the zeal. Lord, in the name of Jesus, locate it this morning and cut that cancer out of our lives. Cut that evil living out of our lives. Lord, it will not spread. All over the body of Christ, anything that causes people to walk like people who are unbelievers, uh, to refuse to believe uh, the power of God, uh, to refuse to believe uh, the manifestations of his glory and instead uh, live by earthly wisdom, live by earthly insight. Uh, Father, cut it out of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, cut out everything that has limited our faith walk, everything that is stopping us. Lord, cut it out in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sometimes when you think about some of the testimonies that you've seen in the body of Christ, you know, you wonder why, why it is that some people still just want to live by sight. You know, when God is able to do what no man can do, Lord, please cut the cancer out of us. Cut it out, Lord. Every living of unbelief, every living of doubt, may it be uprooted in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You know, I've shared with us before, it sounds funny, but when Smith Wigglesworth used to be alive here in Bradford, he would say, if the Holy Ghost doesn't move, I will move him. He wasn't being funny, but what he meant is every time you're in the presence of God, Holy Ghost must move on you. Don't, don't be like, eh, you know, the preacher was not on fire. The service today was dry. It's you who's dry. Don't be like, oh, the prayers today were not powerful. No, every time we meet, Holy Ghost is moving. If Holy Ghost didn't move, you move him. So the onus is upon us. You know, whatever we receive is about how we positioned ourselves. I want us to pray for the restoration of our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions. Bible says in Hebrews 12 to 13, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. He is living and powerful and can pierce to the division of soul and spirit. Why? Because our spirit is already loaded. 
Your spirit is full of God, is full of his power because your spirit has the deposit of God. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ is here in my spirit. I have Christ in me, 100%. I don't have less. I have the same as what Apostle Paul had. I have the same as what Apostle Peter had. I have the same as what Apostle John had, 100%. I don't have any less. And then you say, but why didn't your shadow raise the dead? It's because the power, 100%, has to go through the soul to manifest in the natural. And if our soul is resisting the power, the power just remains in the spirit. You know, Jesus is our shepherd. According to Psalm 23, um, if you read it in the New Living Translation, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He restores my soul. My soul needs to be restored to factory settings. You remember before when we used to have old phones and it used to say restore to factory settings. In other words, something has happened that has changed how this phone was originally set up. Now, do you want it to go back to the way it was when it was already set up? I want to go back to how God originally ordained me to be. I don't want to be confused by worldliness. I don't want to be confused by people who have never seen a miracle. And then you start to think miracles don't happen. I don't want to be confused by people who've never seen the dead come back to life. And then you start to think it never happens. No, may God restore our soul. Begin to pray this morning. Word of God, Jesus, you are living and powerful. You are sharper than any two-edged sword. The pierce to the division of my soul and spirit and restore my soul. Anything in my soul that is resisting the fullness of your glory. It is resisting the power. Anything in my soul that is resisting miracles, signs and wonders. It is resisting Lord. It is stopping you from doing what you put already in my spirit. This morning I pray for healing in my soul. Restore my soul, my mind, my will, my emotions, the way I think, the way I reason, the way I feel. Has it been polluted by the things of the world? Has it been polluted by the religious spirit? Has it been polluted by the testimonies of people who don't believe in your power? Lord, this morning restore my soul. Set my soul on fire. Set my soul on fire. May my soul receive what God has done. May my soul receive what God has done. Restore my soul my soul this morning, oh God, everything in my soul that needs a touch from heaven. Lord, touch me once again. Touch me once again. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. I heard the testimony of Kenneth Hagen when he was lying in bed sick as a teenager with heart failure on death on his deathbed. And then his grandma went to call a certain preacher to come and pray for him. And when the preacher came, the preacher didn't believe in um, divine healing. He came and he says, oh, you poor boy, you're going to be dying soon. Lord, I commit his spirit into your hands. <laughs> I commit his spirit into your hands. May he die in peace and may you receive him in your hands. And Kenneth Hagen, as a young teenage boy who didn't know much about God, as soon as that man was saying, oh, you poor boy, you're going to die. Something in him, which I believe is Holy Spirit, rose up and said, no, I refuse to die. Why should I die? I am not dying. I refuse to die. And you know what? God began to reveal to him from that day, Mark 11 from verses 22. And he held on to it. He kept repeating it. And do you know what? He never died. That preacher who prayed for him to die, died and left him doing miracle signs and wonders for God on planet earth. Something in you must rise up. Ah, don't look at other people and say others have prayed for provision. They are still poor. No, it's not your portion. Don't look at human beings. Look at the word of God. If other humans have not received it, it's not your business. Your business is to receive what God has in store for you. Hallelujah. Let my soul be restored to believe and say, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I believe in the power of God. I believe God can do what no man can do. If other people haven't received it, it doesn't mean that I can't receive because I believe in miracles. I believe God can do it. I believe in the one who died and rose again, that I am able to receive everything that he died for me to receive. Yes. 
Child of God, this morning, I want us to receive what we have never received before. Not because anything different happened on the prayer line, but because you made up your mind to believe the word of God, to believe what he said and refuse to go back empty handed. Jesus said to us, John 14, 12, and we know Jesus is not a liar. He's not a liar. John 14, 12. He said, very truly, I tell you, very truly, verily, verily, truly, truly. I am not lying. I'm repeating it so that you know it's the truth. Truly, truly, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am God. Is there anyone here who believes? Do you believe, child of God? If you believe, greater works than raising the dead shall you do. If you believe, miracle signs and wonders are bursting forth. Now, can you begin to receive in that area where you need to receive? I don't know what the need is that you have this morning, but there is examples of miracles all over the Bible. If you say, I need provision, we have the examples of the widow woman who encountered the prophet of God. And the little she had in her house began to multiply. The mighty God is able to multiply that little that you have in your bank account. Is able to multiply. Is able to multiply. Is able to multiply it. So that provision begins to run over. You started off the morning with overdraft, with credit card debt. It is possible for God to open the windows of heaven and bring you a miracle. You need a miracle of provision. God is able to do it. You say my own miracle is that I need restoration. I need to be uh, restored. What devil stole from me? Well, we have the example of the Shunammite woman. For seven years, she left the land and what she owned was given to other people. When she came back, all her lands and the profit of what had been harvested from the land in those seven years was restored to her. Receive your restoration this morning. Receive your restoration this morning. Receive restoration. Receive it this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything the devil stole from you, your peace, your joy, your well-being, your peace of mind, receive restoration in the name of Jesus. Your family, your relationships that were stolen from you, receive restoration from the one who is the great restorer. Bible says when a thief is caught, he must pay back fourfold what he stole. Receive restoration fourfold this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. You say, well, my own case is healing. Up and down, there are reports of disease and, he- and illness. Oh, how many people did God heal in the Bible? Remember, the little 12-year-old girl, she rose from the dead. The systems of the body came back to life when there was multiple organ failure. All the systems came back. They received resurrection power. Now receive resurrection power. Let the systems in your body receive resurrection power. Let power be released uh, upon every organ in your body. Uh, every muscle, every bone, uh, every part of you. Uh, your bone marrow, receive life uh, and life in abundance uh, in the name of Jesus. If God could bring back to life those who were dead, you are not even dead. Receive life. God has the spare parts. God is able to give you a new kidney. God is able to give you a new kidney. God is able to give you new bones. God can give us a new pelvis. Receive it this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Life and life in abundance. For this reason, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Let the works of the devil be destroyed this morning. Let the works of the devil be destroyed this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Everything we need, uh, your gracious, beautiful hands uh, have provided. Uh, your goodness uh, is running after us. Uh, you have provided all things uh, that we need. Uh, blessed be your name forever. 
Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, toxins be flushed out by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We receive life and life in abundance for in Jesus was life and the life was the light of all men and the light shines in darkness and darkness could not comprehend it. Darkness gets confused right now. Yes, Jesus, we thank you for your Zoe life that is full of light. That light is emanating out of the bodies of all your children and that light is confusing the enemy. They cannot access them in any dimension in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. When Jesus sent out the disciples and he sent them out two by two and he gave them power over sicknesses. The Bible says he gave them power to heal. He sent them out two by two, gave them power. And when they returned, they were testifying about what they had seen. It says in Luke 10, 17, and the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. They returned with joy. They experienced it firsthand. They had seen Jesus doing it before that, but they had not seen it happening through them live and direct. But now they saw it live and direct. And when they came back, they were excited. Remember, Jesus had already told them in Luke 10, 9, heal the sick and tell them the kingdom of God has come upon you. Wherever I go, they must see that the kingdom of God has arrived. (laughs) When you arrive, postcode Jesus has arrived. And there in the postcode of Jesus, the sick are healed, the dead are raised and miracle signs and wonders flow. That 70 came back with joy testifying. That demons, that were a problem for us before, are not a problem anymore. Affliction is not a problem anymore. I want you to pray the same prayer this morning and believe you also are a disciple. Declare it and say, by the time the sun sets, I will return with joy to testify that even the devils are under my feet. They are subject to me are in your name, Jesus. Even the devils are subject to me. They obey me in your name, Lord Jesus. In your name, spirit of infirmity is subject. In your name, Lord, poverty is subject. It's under our feet. When you look at that easy read version that I've been reading for you today, it says in Luke 10, 17, when the 72 followers came back from their trip, they were very happy. They said, Lord, even the demons obeyed us when we used your name. This morning, child of God, as you use the name of Jesus in every situation and circumstance, you will return with joy. You will return with joy because you will testify that the demons obeyed you. Sickness obeyed you. Poverty obeyed you. Whatever is the circumstance, it's obeying you right now because you are not using your own authority. You are not speaking in your own power, but you are using the authority of Jesus. Begin to declare it this morning. I will return with joy. I will return with joy. I'm coming back with joy. I'm coming back with joy. I am coming with joy. I am coming with joy to testify what the Lord has done for me in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree it, O God, and declare it on this prayer line. Miracle signs and wonders break forth. Your children shall return with joy. They will return with testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Shall we please turn to Psalm 126? Psalm 126. I want to read it for us in the easy read version before you declare it to yourself, you know, in whatever translation you choose. Psalm 126 from verse 1. It will be like a dream when the Lord comes back with the captives of Zion. We will laugh and sing happy songs, then the other nations will say, the Lord did a great thing for Zion. The Lord did a great thing for patience. Yes, we will be happy because the Lord did a great thing for us. So Lord, bring back the good times like a desert stream filled again with flowing water. Then those who were sad when they planted will be happy when they gather the harvest. Those who cried as they carried the seeds will be happy when they bring in the crops. Hallelujah. Begin to read from your own translation now and personalize it. 
Today, my life is going to be like a dream. For the Lord has turned again my captivity. From today, in the Thank you this morning. I thank you this morning for the good things you have done for us. I thank you this morning, Lord. You have brought back the good times like a desert stream filled again with flowing water. Where there was a desert, water is flowing. Where there was a lack, abundance has broke out. Where there was pain and sorrow, joy has broke out in the name of Jesus. Oh, where there was sickness, healing is flowing like a river. Healing is flowing like a river. Peace is is flowing like a river in the name of Jesus. Lord, those who were sad when they planted the seed of prayer, they shall be happy today as they gather the harvest. Those who cried as they carried the precious seed of your word will be happy as they bring in the sheaves, as they bring in the harvest. To God be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin. And open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear the song of praise. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Let the people rejoice in Jesus' matchless name.